Roswell Flight Test Crew here in the St. Columbia Gorge. We were recently out this way to test whether or not small unmanned aircraft systems could be used to inspect wind turbines. Well, let's show them what we got. All right. The thing about wind farms is they only put them where it's windy. As you can see on our handheld anemometer, the surface wind was getting up over 20 knots. That's about 25 miles an hour. Instruments at the top of the towers were reporting 35 to 40 miles per hour, which is right at Raven's proven top speed, meaning she would just barely be able to hold her own. No doubt this mission was going to test the limits of our equipment and our skills, but the payoff could be huge for the wind power industry. So the reason this matters is because they have to do periodic inspections from the ground, looking for any visible damage. And if they do see something, they need to send guys up in mountaineering gear or with a crane or something to take a close look and inspect the propeller. And sometimes it's nothing, it's just cosmetic damage and they can carry on. So obviously it would save an enormous amount of time and effort, not to mention be safer if they could just use an unmanned aircraft system to go up and take a look. Tekkenstein goggled up for a series of initial test flights to check aircraft performance before we tried moving up close to one of the enormous rotor blades. Until you're right up next to one, it's really hard to appreciate the scale of these wind turbines. The nacelle is 262 feet off the ground, and each of its three rotor blades weighs 17,000 pounds. To put that in perspective, the Ford Escape that we drive weighs 3,500 pounds. In other words, each rotor is the equivalent of 15 SUVs spinning in the sky. After both Tekkenstein and Raven proved that they could handle the wind, it was time to see if we could capture any useful imagery. Our target was a turbine that had been shut down for maintenance. From the ground, it was just possible to make out what appeared to be some possible damage, located about halfway between two T-shaped marks that indicated a lift point on the blade. It's always a good idea to have a spotter when you're flying FPV, but in this case, it was absolutely essential for Tekkenstein and I to be in constant communication to make sure that Raven didn't get too close to the rotor. We were clearly able to see the point of interest and capture both HD video and still images, even though the high winds made it a bumpy ride. Well, flying in the wind, a little bit harrowing around the blades there, but other than that, so the ship handled pretty well in the wind, actually. I was kind of surprised. A little bit odd because you're at a constant angle. No matter which way you're going, you're forcing yourself into the wind. There were times flying against the wind where I had the stick all the way over just to counter the wind and move slightly forward. So I was at about the limits of the, the ability of the craft here. When we looked at the results on the ground, we could clearly see that what might possibly have been more serious damage was actually just some chipped paint. With Raven safely back on the ground, we had proven that it is feasible to inspect wind turbine rotors with a small unmanned aircraft system. Well, after today, I think we can say that we've flown with our biggest fans ever. <laughs> Hope you enjoy watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe. I don't get